if you listen to my show, then you know that I try to focus on solutions. And something, something as big as executive order by the president of this country. I mean, how the, how the hell do we fight that? How, how can you find a solution in your life to take when somebody in far off land somewhere else is trying to tell you you need to register a firearm or you need to give up firearms and even some talk and speculation from supposed insiders in the administration saying that this is just the beginning and I think that's what most people are afraid of is that this is just the beginning that will lead to uh, all out gun regulation and eventually complete disarmament of the American people well you know why? Why are we afraid of that? What's the big deal about that, right? That's what the uh, some of the left wing says. Why are you afraid? What do you want your guns for? You're just crazy. You're crazy, uh, gung ho Americans who need to let go of this false culture that we have. Um, you know, regarding guns. I don't know if I buy that. Historically, looking back, you can see that guns and this, things like the Second Amendment have been there to protect the people from tyrants. And when we're dealing with tyrants, as we are in this country, you need to be prepared. So I would say stay armed. Don't register any guns if you haven't already. And if they try to do this grandfathering thing where they want to, to re-register um, gun owners backwards, refuse, resist. Even even Ron Paul, who this past week appeared on the Alex Jones Show and made an announcement that he would be uh, – begin writing, having his own blog, and starting to speak more openly, you know. And that's that's something that I'm looking forward to because while I re refuse to openly, uh, you know, endorse Ron Paul while he was running because I had something, a sick feeling in my stomach, just that the idea that if Ron Paul was able to win, then that must mean he's not on our side. Going to Tampa, though, and seeing how they changed and did everything they could to keep him and his people out, for me, in my mind, it solidified, okay, this guy must have really been a threat, because otherwise they wouldn't have worked so hard. And now that Ron Paul is able to speak freely, he's advising all Americans to refuse and to resist any attempts um, at the Second Amendment. And again, if you're only reacting with your emotions and looking at the situation that's taking place in Sandy Hook and that's taking place in, in other cities. And as I've said on past shows since that's happened, that I believe that we're going to see more of these shootings, unfortunately. They will increase because they have to bring the American people to their knees. They want us to be begging for, for, uh, for state help, for their support. But if we focus on building communities and empowering ourselves as individuals, then we won't need to rely on them. And I think that that's, that's really what scares them, they, whoever they are, the Illuminati, 1%, New World Order, whatever you want to call them, whoever those that are in power are, what scares them the most is not an armed populace, uh, you know, storming the, the gates of the White House, although, hey, that would be pretty damn, pretty damn cool to see. What scares them more, I believe, is people who recognize that this is a matrix it's a matrix of control that they have shown us they believe they have tricked us to believe that we need them and in reality this entire system is is dependent upon upon us upon our consent that's that's the tricky thing about this the system, the matrix, ultimately depends upon the consent which we give, whether you recognize it or not. Every day that you choose to be a part of this system, you are consenting to it. You're consenting to let them uh, charge you taxes, you know, at the barrel of a gun and to take that money and to, to uh, bomb people in other countries. You're consenting to using your tax dollars to implement drones around the country. So the second you begin to start to stand up, whether it's actively resisting taxes or, you know, just going out and passing out information to, to your fellow man or going downtown and asking questions, trying to get people to think deeper than what they're shown, whatever approach it is that you take, it's, it's necessary and it's important. Every single act of resistance adds up and matters in the end. So don't ever think that the things you're doing are too small, especially, I mean, we're dealing with a situation. This, I mean, it still blows my mind. And how ridiculous is it for the powers that be to talk to us and say anything, 
anything about gun control and about responsibility when we, those who have chosen to educate themselves, are aware of things such as Operation Fast and Furious. The powers that be are responsible for selling guns to Mexican gangsters, guns that have resulted in the deaths of American citizens. And despite this, they continue to parade Eric Holder around as some type of uh, hero that the people that people should be looking up to. Um, recently, last year, I I actually did a, a video interview at the National uh, NAACP convention here in Houston at the George R. Brown Convention Center, and I spoke to <clears throat> Howard Jefferson, who is one of the executives of the entire NAACP the video where I interview the NAACP and I bring up these facts uh, about Fast and Furious and essentially they say, well, you know what, he's our guy, we're going to support him regardless, so sorry to break it to you, bud, but we're, we're going with him. And they said, specifically, with Eric Holder, the good outweighs the bad. And what I saw, to be quite honest, is just a case of individuals not wanting to Basically, just reverse racism is, is a, a nice way to put it because essentially what I was told by the NAACP and the supporters there is that <clears throat> Eric Holder is the first African-American um, African American attorney general in the country under the first African-American president of the country. And so we have to give them their, their space. we got to give them their time. Obama needs his, his two terms and his eight years. Eric Holder, no matter what he's done, he – he must be respected and left in that position of power because <clears throat> we can't take down a black man. And I, I'm, these are not my words. I'm telling you, go watch the interview yourself. They said Obama is and Eric Holder are the crowning achievement of the civil rights movement. And to take them down, even if they are responsible for supposed lies or crimes, um, would be unjust in the eyes of these men. So... Just think about that. One rule for the, the leaders and a different rule for you.